We do have uh, one of my favorite nonprofits joining us this morning. The Gentle Barn is an animal rescue group for all kinds of animals. Their number one goal is teaching people kindness and compassion to animals, each other, and our planet. And joining us this morning is the founder of Gentle Barn, the Gentle Barn, Ellie Lax. Ellie, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Uh, uh, obviously, Lisa loves you guys. Thank you I'm for just, your advocacy. Yes, I'm indeed. just learning about you guys yes. today. Lisa was sharing some with me this morning. Can you tell for me and then the rest of our viewers a little more about Gentle Barn? Absolutely. The Gentle Barn is a 23-year-old national organization with locations in California, Tennessee, and Missouri. We rescue animals that have nowhere else to go because they're too old, too sick, too lame, or too scared to be adoptable. We bring them in, rehabilitate them, give them sanctuary with us for the rest of their lives. And then if and when they're ready, we partner with them to heal people with the same stories of trauma and connect people to the love and magic of animals. It really is incredible what you guys provide. Tell us right now uh, the concerns regarding climate and the really, really hot summer we're experiencing right now and how you're having to care for these animals with these extreme weather conditions. Yeah, it's incredible. Starting the Gentle Barn 23 years ago, um, the seasons lasted about three months, you know, and it, it was very clear what we had to do to take care of the animals. But the seasons are hotter and colder and they last longer. And sometimes it's really hot during the day, but the temperatures plummet at night. So we've had to really scramble to be able to take care of our 200 rescued animals in these extreme weather conditions. Um, and now all of a sudden we need more supplies and we need more things to be able to keep them comfortable, like insulation, more shade, more pools for the pigs, more trees, um, heaters, fans, we just globally need way more things to be able to keep them comfortable in these crazy changing temperatures. Yeah. And, and a lot of folks watching this are going to want to help out. Uh, what can they do? How are you fundraising and getting the resources that you need? Yeah, we have a global warming campaign at our website, gentlebarn.org, um, and any support is greatly appreciated. We have a lot of money to raise to be able to take care of our animals. And Ellie, I, I wanted to get I wanted to get the fundraiser info out immediately and, and the conditions you guys are having to work with. But tell us some backstory on the Gentle Barn. How many animals are in your care right now and what are some of the more unique animals that you're working with? Yeah, we have 200 animals um, across the three locations and we're home to horses, cows, pigs, sheep, goats, chickens, turkeys, peacocks, llamas, emus, donkeys and dogs. And so I think if I had to pick the most unique, it would probably be our emu Earl. Um, he's basically like a giant dinosaur. He's really funny. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, I mean, obviously, the, we think of the gentle barn, you're, you're taking care of all of the animals, but you mentioned in the beginning that you maybe partner with people and putting the animals together. Uh, I've, I've been reading about cow hug therapy. What's the story there? Yes, and so basically when I was a child, it was animals that saved me, listened as I cried, and mirrored back to me that I was wanted and lovable. And so I always had this very deep personal knowing of how healing and transformative animals can be. And so from seven years old, it was always a dream of mine to open the gentle barn be able to save animals that had nowhere else to go and partner those animals with people that are suffering. And so um, for 23 years now, we've been doing a whole slew of programs for people that are struggling out in the community. But especially during the pandemic, we've rolled out cow hug therapy for individuals because everyone is stressed out now. And so anyone that wants to can come to the gentle barn. They can have an hour long session where they're hugging a cow, putting their faces down on their sides, slowing down their heart rate with, along with the cows, matching their breathing with the cows. And it really helps to ground, center, quiet, and bring back hope and strength to people. I absolutely believe it. I think we underestimate the power of animals and, and those our relationships own healing, right? and our own yeah. healing. Yeah, I, Ellie, I know you mentioned the fundraiser underway right now. If folks can't donate, how else can they help your cause? Well, they can just pass along the message that the Gentle Barn is looking for support and for help. Um, they can share uh, about the Gentle Barn on social media. We are all across all social media platforms. They can share our website with people and just get the word out there that these temperatures are rising and changing and our animals need a lot more than they used to need to stay comfortable and healthy. Yeah. So you've grown quite a lot then in these last 23 years, right? 
Yeah, um, 23 years ago, the Gentle Barn started in my little teeny tiny half acre backyard in the San Fernando Valley. Oh, and we have goodness. grown now to four properties, three locations. Um, and we've got hundreds and hundreds of people coming out to see the animals and heal with them. That's really incredible. Yeah. How do you come across the animals in need? Uh, well, people call us actually. Um, so we partner with the police department. We partner with other rescues who might take the adoptable animals, but will call us about the animals that have ongoing care needs and are not adoptable at all. Um, yeah, we work with all the shelters okay. and the other rescues and people call us. And then how, how do you pair them up with folks? I mean, obviously people will come out to the gentle barn, but do you do your own sort of outreach to get that message out to the people? I mean, the, we share the animal stories on social media, and that's really how we have a worldwide reach. Yeah. And these animals have a much larger voice to be able to portray their intelligence, their affection, and their personalities. Um, and yeah, it's incredible how people come and find us, and they think maybe they're just bringing their family for a fun day at the Gentle Barn. But when they're here and they hear the animal stories and they look into their eyes, uh, something magical happens and their hearts open and there's connections that happen here that really change lives both for animals and people. I believe it. Ellie, really quickly before we go, uh, where can folks go for more information about the Gentle Barn? Please go to gentlebarn.org. Love it. Ellie Lacks with the Gentle Barn. Thank you. We're to uh, San Fernando Valley. We used to live there That's as well. Right. So She's from there. <laughs> I used to, to live there. We, we love animals so much. And we, yeah. uh, you know, uh, boy, I was just feeling it when you were talking about the meditation, the relax. It's like, I, it's boy, real, I want to get with man. a cow it's right now and real. hang out for the day. Yes. My goodness. Thank Come you. Come on Ellie. out. Come on out for oh, a cow hug. Oh, we got to do it. We got to yes. do it. Ellie Lacks with the Gentle Barn. Thanks for spending some time with us this morning. We appreciate you and your advocacy. Thank you for having me.